So these meters here are fairly standard school equipment. Uh, it's pretty obvious which is which. And these are brilliant because you can just plug these into the circuit and it tells you maybe the current or the potential difference across the component. But the, the, I guess one of the limitations of these is that it's very hard uh, to measure very, very small currents, so maybe microamps or milliamps, uh, rather than sort of stuff in the range of sort of zero to one. And uh, for that reason, what we often use is something called a multimeter. Now, a multimeter, uh, and this is just a common example of one which is I've seen in quite a few different classrooms, but you might have something different at your school. But the advantage of this is that it allows you not only to measure the potential difference in an AC circuit, which we don't really do that much, but it allows you to look at a whole different range of potential differences for a DC circuit. Uh, and you just turn the dial to whichever uh, kind of uh, values that you're looking at. It can be used as an ammeter uh, and especially useful. You can see that it measures uh, very, very, very small currents, which is actually sometimes very, very useful uh, in the work you do at A-level. Uh, this range up here, um, going up to about 200 milliamps, you need to connect your um, leads, if you're going to be using it, to the bottom two holes. Okay, And these ones here are fused, which means if you've got too high a current that you're trying to find out uh, and trying to measure with this, it will blow the fuse in the back of this device. So it is something to kind of pay attention to. If you do blow the fuse, it can be replaced, but obviously that's another job for the teacher or the technician to carry out. If you want to measure big currents, you can start um, using this one here, and I think it basically says 10 amps down here. You can turn the dial to 10 amps, and you know, 10 amps is pretty big. That's kind of uh, almost like quite dangerous kind of levels of current, quite a lot of heating effects. Uh, but, you know, just choose the appropriate dial. Um, what I'm going to use this for at this time, though, is as an ohm meter, which is something that we can't do with uh, one of these other devices from uh, in, the, in the classroom. So an ohm meter measures resistance directly. And what I've got here is just a very small resistor. Now, I guess I could look at the colour bands to try and work out the exact resistance, but I've forgotten what each colour band stands for. So we've got an unknown resistor here. So what I'm going to do is if I turn this to the ohm symbol at the bottom, uh, it says at the moment one point something. And that means that uh, the resistance of this component is greater than 200 ohms. You know, resistances tend to be quite big numbers. So what we can then do, we can let go, we can turn the dial, and this now goes up to a maximum of 2,000 ohms. And indeed, it gives us a value of 389. So this resistor has a value of 389 ohms. Um, and this is an appropriate figure. Sometimes you need to go bigger. And you'll see that when we go up to 20,000 kilo ohms, uh, now this is displaying our value in kilo ohms. So 0 0.39 kilo ohms is the same as, uh, you know, 388, 389 ohms. But also you can see that as you go to a bigger range, you're going to get less uh, precision with that data. And so it continues. Finally, when you finish using a multimeter, um, don't leave them turned on. It's really annoying when you come back to use one of these and all the batteries are flat. Turn it to the off position uh, and that'll just kind of make it easier for you next time that you come to use this. So pretty much that is an, uh, a multimeter. Sometimes causes trouble, but often it's kind of quite straightforward. Again, if you're not sure, ask your teacher. They will explain it so you can use it. And these are a really valuable tool uh, when we use when we come to investigate circuits at A level.